Hello, this video is a demonstration and guide to using the new Voltage Memory module by Mengxi Music. The module can be thought of as a flexible performance controller with both manual and sequence playback modes. There is little choice in modules like this, so for me the Voltage Memory is a very welcome addition to the Eurorack family. Let's jump straight into an overview. The panel of the Voltage Memory has 12 touch controls which we call the pages. Each page has six individual voltages stored. Um, and we also have seven banks of the 12 pages for a total of 84 steps. Um, I'll say here, it's worth considering for each bank that the top left page is number one um, and going across to the bottom row and the bottom right being page number 12. This will make sense when we look at sequencing. Uh, to access the seven different banks, we use the three push buttons. Uh, and you need to hold on to your hats with both hands here because these are actually set as four, two, and one. This confused me a little to begin with. Um, to access bank number one, you push the rightmost button. To access bank number four, you push the leftmost button. And to get the odd numbers like three and five, etc., you push two banks together like one and two to get three. We have six knobs and the knobs will change their function depending on the mode we're in. So we'll actually look at those when we, when we look at the different modes. The six jack sockets at the top are our six voltages. Uh, the three jack sockets below are our trigger and gate inputs. And the last jack on the end here is our trigger and gate output. We have the mode select switch by here and the final button is the uh, start and record write control. So let's jump in and look at the manual mode. To access the manual mode on voltage memory, we need to set the mode select switch to the down position. This mode uh, allows for the direct playback of the pages just by pressing down on them. So this is a really simple patch. I'm just, we're listening to um, an oscillator and the first voltage output from voltage memory. So the first voltage output for each page is connecting to the one volt per octave input of the oscillator. So this is also our main edit mode. The six knobs in this mode correspond to the six voltage outputs. And in order to set a new voltage, we need to adjust them. So we're listening, as I said, to voltage one. If I adjust the other parts at the moment, you will hear nothing happening at all. Um, to set a new voltage, you adjust the pot to the position you want and you press the right button and that's now stored. It's really fast to set up a little sequence doing this. So let's go to a different voltage uh, output. And I'll show you how fast we can, we can actually set something up. So we're now on number three. We can also copy and paste. Um, in order to do this, you first need to select the page that you want to copy. You hold down the right button and you press the page that you want to paste to. So 
So as you can see, it's really quick to actually set up new stuff in this. You can do it in seconds. Uh, and there's one more thing uh, I want to show you in manual mode. So that's really all there is to editing. We can also um, sync the playback uh, of the pages to a clock. So in order to do this, I'm going to take um, the output from my clock and plug it into the second trigger input. And in order for this to work, we also need to apply a high gate to the first trigger or gate input. So I'm going to use the gate output from my light strip module. Uh, whenever the light strip is active, we're applying a high gate. So my clock is about 40 BPM, so it's pretty slow. And you'll see now that changes don't actually happen until it gets a new trigger pulse. And that's really all there is to it. Okay, so next let's have a look at some of the playback modes the voltage memory offers. Uh, in order to get to the kind of playback modes, we need to flip the toggle switch to the upward position. Let's start off with the sequencer and the arpeggiator. So if you're following this as like a step-by-step -step guide, what I recommend you start off by doing is setting all of the knobs to the counterclockwise position, because these all tend to change things in the different modes. So we just know that we're kind of at an initial set. So starting off with the sequencer, um, in order to make sure we have the sequencer selected, we need the first knob to be in counterclockwise position, fully counterclockwise, and we need the fourth knob to also be in fully counterclockwise. Um, the sequencer can be um, clocked by either uh, an internal clock to the voltage memory or we can take an external source. So in order to set the um, internal clock we use knob number three. Fully counterclockwise is internal and clockwise is the external clock. Knob number two will set the tempo of the internal clock. And at the moment we're hearing a 24 step sequence which is going across two banks. Um, so let's look at how to set the start and end points. In order to set where a sequence starts, we hold down the start button and press the page that we want to start from. And in order to set the end sequence, we just press the page down without holding the start button. So. At the moment I'm just working in bank 1, but I can also set bank 2, and I could set the end point somewhere in here. There we go, and so on. So you can do this across all 7 banks, um, and set the sequence to be anything between 1 and 84 steps. Um, it has to happen sequentially though. Uh, something that confused me early on um, is that I thought bank 4 was actually bank 1 and when I was trying to go between what I thought was bank 1 and bank 2 lots of strange things started happening very quickly but I've told you the way it is so you need not have to deal with that. Um, so let's set knob number 3 to um, the clockwise position and have a look at clocking this um, with our clock module. So. Um, to do this, we just need to apply our clock trigger into trigger input number two. And this is clocking at about 120 BPM at the moment. Uh, 
If we apply a high gate into trigger input number one, it will freeze the sequence. And finally, if we actually plug our clock trigger into trigger input number three, it will cause sequence to play backwards. Um, you may or may not be thinking about what happens if you set the start point to a later point than the end point. Well, it's quite straightforward. Sequence will just play backwards. Okay, so next let's have a look at the arpeggiator. Um, to get here is um, very similar. We need to make sure, let's set all the knobs back to fully counterclockwise. Uh, we need to make sure that we are in um, the, the playback mode. First knob needs to be set to fully counterclockwise and our fourth knob needs to be set to fully clockwise. Um, to begin with, I'm going to, I mean, this works in a very similar way to the sequencer. We can either clock um, internally or externally. So I'm going to start off with a um, internal clock by setting knob number three to fully counterclockwise. And we can set the tempo again using the second knob. Pressing down on pages will create patterns. And the thing I really love about this arpeggiator is the pattern will basically follow the order that you press down on pages. So just to demonstrate this, I'll do a basic kind of increasing pitch. And then we could add some other stuff, so let's go Um, and yeah, just like with the sequencer, we can clock using an external trigger as well. So I'm going to set knob number three to the fully clockwise position. And I'm going to apply my clock trigger to input number two. Again, if we apply a high gate to trigger input number one, it will freeze the sequence. And if we apply our clock trigger to input number three, the sequence will play backwards. Next, let's take a look at the looper function. In order to get to the looper function, make sure the uh, switch is in the upward position. And we're going to turn knob one, in this case, all the way to the fully clockwise position. Now the looper is really simple. Basically, we just need to hold down, we can set the banks as usual. We just need to hold down the start button or the record button and play in our sequence. As soon as we um, press down on the first page, um, the, the sequence will start recording. And as soon as we let go of the record button, it will start playing back. So let's have a go of this now. And if we apply a clock signal, or a trigger signal even, into the second input, it will restart the loop. And pressing record just clears it. Okay, and finally, 
we're going to look at um, some experimental modes that have been added to the voltage memory, uh, which are all to do with pressure applied to the capacitive pads. So there are two modes here. There's like, um, I don't know exactly how to describe the, the latest one, but there's the pressure sequencer and then there's just kind of like a, a general presser, pressure patch. In order to access these, we need to set knob number one to 12 o'clock and then knob number six basically sets between our kind of pressure mode and the pressure sequence. So I just want to cover the kind of the pressure touch mode first. And what I've got going on here is I've actually got four oscillators plugged in and each of the voltage outputs is connecting into the, the CV inputs of a VCA for each of those oscillators. Now, how this mode works is each pad, each two pads uh, linked vertically correspond to um, voltage output one to six. And pressing down on a pad has a, um, a voltage resolution of zero to 30. So two pads together, you can go between zero and 60. So kind of changing the amount of pressure I'm placing on the pads and the amount of surface I'm covering with the base of my finger, um, I can increase or decrease the resolution. Let's take a look at the pressure sequence mode. So I've gone back down to just one voltage output, but of course you can use as many as you want to. Um, this is another kind of experimental mode. And in this case, the, the sequencer is always a three-step sequencer. And if I go to bank number one, the four pages, or sorry, the, the, the pages correspond as normal to whatever you have preset in them but they work in kind of groups of four, I should say. So you have three steps and each one of your steps has to be from one of these kind of square blocks of four. Um, so the way the pressure input influences it is basically the more pressure you apply, um, the longer the, the sequencer wall will linger on that step. So I'll give you an example. Ah, sorry. <laughs> In order to get here, we need to set knob one to 12 o'clock as, as we already have. And in this case, we want to set knob six to fully clockwise. Let's make that pith a bit more beefy. So to summarize, the pages are the same. You can only select one from each set of four. And, um, and yeah, the amount of pressure I'm putting down on the pad is basically setting the length of each step. So if I kind of put a really tiny amount of pressure here, and 
as I increase it. So something I've neglected to talk about uh, so far in the video is the gate and trigger outputs on the end here because we haven't been using it. So let's have um, a quick look at what this does in the different modes. As of standard, if we're in our manual playback mode, then every time I press down on a page, then we get a high gate and the gate will remain high, as you can see by the LED, um, so long as I have my finger down on a page. When I release it, it's released. So this is great if you, if you use like attack hold release envelopes, for example, um, you, you know, you can get some nice results from that. Uh, if I switch over to the sequence mode, let's just get it going on the internal clock. Um, as you should be able to see now, as each step changes, um, we're getting a very quick trigger pulse instead of a gate. So it's just, um, it's just switching on and off very quickly. And this is pretty much the same for all of the sequencing modes. Um, as a note, if you use an external clock, as I'll just demonstrate quickly now, then you don't actually get a, a trigger or gate output. Um, so basically it's expected that you just split your clock signal before you get to voltage memory, should you want it to be triggering an envelope or something similar at the same time. Now, there's one other thing to note here. Um, if I set the voltage memory to the internal clock, we see we have this trigger pulse um, being output here. If I switch back into manual mode now, then every time I press down on a page, we actually just get a fast trigger output as opposed to a high gate. If you want to get it back, to the gate mode, we just switch back into the kind of sequence mode and we just turn the clock control to the clockwise position as if it was to be controlled by an external clock. Now if you go back to the, um, the manual mode, you'll see we are back to the, the gate mode. So I'd like to finish this video off um, by giving you a couple of patch ideas to get started with the voltage memory. So I'm describing this first one as creating a complex voice. Now you can probably think about doing this with any oscillator, but one I've been having a lot of fun with is the synthesis technology E350, the morphing terrarium. If you're not familiar with this oscillator, it's basically a, um, a digital oscillator based on wavetables, and you have this really nice morphing feature um, between the um, a table of waves on an X and Y axis, which you can control with CV. So at the moment, I've just got the, um, the E350 coming straight out into a VCA, and um, the VCA is being triggered by the gate output. So we have a little bit of decay on the sound. Um, first thing I've been liking doing quite a lot is taking a second voltage and plugging it into the Y axis of the wavetables. And now every time I press a page, um, I'm changing the timbre of the sound somehow. And I can obviously set this whenever I want to. So how else can we expand on this? Um, so here's another thing I like doing is uh, taking an LFO. I'm going to use the 
Tides um, LFO by uh, Mutable Instruments. And I'm going to take the bipolar output and plug it into the, um, the X morph on the E350. So we're hearing some audio rate modulation at the moment. Let's slow it down a bit. Now we can use the other outputs from voltage memory to uh, do some stuff here. So we could we could take um, one of them and plug it into the um, the frequency modulation of the LFO. So now every time I press a different page, we're going to get a different frequency of modulation. And the uh, Tides also has a nice little feature where it has a built-in VCA, so I can I can set like the depth of the modulation with um, with another voltage. So again, in, you know, I'm just using um, three or four modules here, and already I've got this really kind of dynamic and um, flexible sound, which I can just change in, in seconds if I want to. Um, so, you know, it may or may not sound good to your ears at the moment, but I'm sure you can think of I think the voltage memory really shines when you start looking at some of the creative ways you can tap into the playback modes. So I don't know if you've been checking out Meng Che's videos on the on the module already, but he's been using Music Thing Modular's Microphony module as a way of kind of triggering and gating the, the sequence in arpeggiator modes. Um, and it's no accident that I've stuck my two light strip modules right next to voltage memory because it makes for a lot of fun and creative playback. Um, so here's a little example. Um, I'm going to be playing back. We've got um, the arpeggiator mode going on. First of all, I'm going to just start by setting it to the external clocking. I'm just using the one light strip module here. The gate output is going to be split um, and one part of it is coming back to um, basically trigger my envelope and the other part is coming back to here, which is going to um, clock the sequence, clock the arpeggiator. So, um, oh yeah, and the other thing is um, I'm taking the CV out and that's going into my the second input of my VCA. So the VCA is being controlled both by the light strip level and the, um, the envelope level. So we get a nice little bit of decay whenever I take my finger off the light strip. So this is how it sounds. And so this is just with the uh, it being set to external clock mode, but we can have some fun and get some interesting stuff going if I set it to the internal mode as well. So I'm going to do that now. So it's quite simple and it's quite silly, but you know, it's again, it's just using a couple of modules. We've got some pretty complicated and interesting stuff going on. Okay, and finally, um, I've kind of set up this dual voice. So still got the same thing going on with the E350. Um, and I've also added a, another analog oscillator with a bit of modulation and things going on. And I'm using the envelope generator to add a bit of variation in attack times and things now. 
Um, so we can just, I'm just kind of building on this whole kind of complex voice idea, I guess. enjoy doing um, across my banks is I've generally got <clears throat> one row where both oscillators are going to be in tune of each other and then kind of simple two-part chords on the second row so So I hope that's been of some use. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and um, you definitely need one of these in your setup.